All right, welcome back, Power Zone Sports Podcast. It is now NFC and AFC East preview time. We are going to head up to New York City, talking to Zach Gelb of the Zach Gelb Show, Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m., Infinity Sports Network, used to be CBS Sports, and a man who just turned 30 years old, got into a new decade. Congratulations to Mr. Gelb. Hope your summer's going well. Yeah, no, it's been great. The only problem is when you turn 30, you start to realize there's a lot of gray hairs on, on your cabeza. So that's the only downfall. But hey, <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> well, Zach's based up in New York City, so no better person to talk all things NFC and AFC East up there in the uh, Northeast. And he get, again, he's got great insight about uh, what's going on up there. All right, let's start in the NFC East. Dallas 12-5, and five, Washington 4-13, and 13, Philly 11-6, and six, and the Giants 6-11. and 11. Let's start there with your Giants, 6-11. and 11. What are they doing? Um, I think they have a good regime in their GM and their head coach in Brian Dable and Joe Shane. You may not see the results on the field this year, uh, but I stress to Giants fans, patience. And I know that's not usually popular in the NFL or in the yep. sports world anymore, uh, but we did see what Brian Dable was able to do with the roster with minimal talent on it in year one. Year two, I thought they were going to regress. They did regress. And now it's like year three, okay, you're stuck with Daniel Jones, but no one actually believes Daniel Jones is a long-term guy. So the way that I kind of look at it is that the Giants on defense are going to be solid. Uh, because you got Dexter Lawrence, you got Kayvon Thibodeau, you added Brian Burns, you have one of the more underrated linebackers in the league in Bobby Okereke. But on the offensive side of the ball, the offensive line has improved, but they're improving from the floor. So how much of an improvement is it actually? And what does that equate to? Uh, the only really exciting piece on the offensive side of the ball is Malik Neighbors. But there's no doubt about it. The Giants are going to be in the market for a quarterback next year. The question just is, will the coach and GM still be there? And barring it being – it's one thing being bad, and then there, then there's being an embarrassment. Right. As long as it's not a clown show, as long as it's not embarrassing, I don't expect that with Dayball and Shane. I would prefer if I was running the Giants for both of them to be back next season. What would you think of the move of letting Saquon you know, do what he did in free agency and obviously going down the road? I mean, obviously two years ago they made the decision to extend Jones and not extend Barkley. Just your thought there with Barkley. Yeah, I don't really fault them for where the team is at and you wanted to allocate the money in other positions. Now, do you love him going to Philadelphia? Like, I lived in Philly for seven years. I know Eagles fans are delirious about it, and they're jumping up and down like fat kids in the candy store, and so would I. Uh, so I understand why John Mayer wasn't thrilled that Saquon left there, but for where the running back position is and where the Giants are right now, I understand why they allowed him to walk. And let's just be real about it. Once a deal was not done this time last year, a deal was never getting done with the Giants and Saquon Barkley. So I do think it was best for Saquon to move on, and he's in a better spot now, and I think it was best for the Giants to move on just because of where they are right now building a football team. Last quick question. Other than other than the quarterback, are the Giants in a pretty good spot as far as developing weapons around the, the quarterback and defensively? Do you think they're in a pretty decent spot other than the quarterback? Defensively, yes. Offensively, I think Malik Neighbors is going to be a very good football player. But outside of that, uh, the offensive line is still a question mark even though they've brought in some veterans this offseason and they paid veterans that way. Uh, but I, I would still say I got to see more before I could say, okay, I expect the Giants offense just to, to only be a Daniel Jones problem this year. I think there's other question marks around the offense side of the ball. All right, let's go to Philadelphia, 11-6. and six. They lose to the Buccaneers in the playoffs last year. The big question coming out of the offseason into, into, into 2024, the Jalen Hurts-Sirianni relationship. Do you take credence into that? Do you think that's real? Or what, what, do, you think that, what do you think of that uh, the, the smoke coming out of Philly there? Uh, it's 100% real. This is a football team that started 10-1, and one, and then they won one game down the stretch. This is a team with Super Bowl talent. And here's my question with Nick Sirianni. What does he do? So now <laughs> Kellen Moore right. is going to be calling the plays on the offense side of the ball. Right. There's minimal contact between the coach and the quarterback. He's not a defensive-minded coach. And last year, I know the players love him, but there's a difference in being a player's coach and then being a doormat. 
And I think a lot of what you saw last year were the players treating Nick Sirianni, oh, we like him because we could walk all over him. I would have got rid of Nick Sirianni when you had at the time Jim Harbaugh available. Now he's with the Chargers. You had Bill Belichick still available. Mike Vrabel still available. Right. Even though Sirianni has exceeded expectations in Philly because he was hired, everyone's like, who the heck is this guy? And he's been to the playoffs three straight years, and one of them had a 10-point lead in the Super Bowl. I'm not taking that risk with Sirianni. But with all that being said, that's the team that I've gone back and forth and vacillated with all offseason. When they brought Sirianni back, I'm like, all right, I'm out of them. Then they signed Saquon Barkley. I'm like, oh, I'm back in. <laughs> then this article comes out, which really didn't tell you anything new. It just reiterated. And it's like, hmm, I'm kind of out. And then the following week, I'm like, but they have too much talent in the NFC. Anything short of a Super Bowl championship this year for the Philadelphia Eagles, them raising Lombardi, is a, is a disaster. It, they are a Super Bowl or bust team. But for Sirianni, number one, he has to improve his relationship with Jalen Hurts. And then I also think they need to bare minimum reach the NFC championship game. But the relationship part with Hurts is the most important because they already paid Jalen. Right. Howie Roseman's not going anywhere. They will get rid of Nick Sirianni if at the end of the year, his quarterback's like, yeah, I'm out on the coach. How do you think the losses of Kelsey and Fletcher Cox, a couple of the older older leadership guys in that locker room and all that, how do you think that'll that'll play? Kelsey more so of a concern than Fletcher Cox, and that's not anything negative against Fletcher Cox. Um, but And Fletcher Cox should be a Hall of Famer, but Jason Kelsey's a first ballot sure. Hall of Famer and sure. really was not only the heartbeat of the Eagles, but the heartbeat of that city right. in Philadelphia. But that line still has multiple pro bowlers across it from a, a year ago. So there are losses, but that's the sport where guys get up there in age, they've won a championship, both of them. They both should have uh, gold jackets one day. So you got to replace them. So it's a, uh, I'm not going to say it's like no concern, but it's not like I'm sitting here freaking out because you knew that this day was coming uh, for both of them. And it wasn't like they were both going to go play another five years. Sneaky under the radar addition, Vic Fangio to run the defense. Yeah, well, it can't get any worse than last year right. because Sean Desai just wasn't ready for the position. And then Matt Patricia comes over and say what you want about Patricia in New England and how ridiculous it was him running the offense side of the ball for that year. And he was a disaster with the Detroit Lions. But the guy's proven he's a good defensive coordinator. But I don't know what he was doing in Philadelphia. The way that they used Hassan Reddick down the stretch, uh, really, uh, Matt Patricia should have been locked up and charged with, with football crimes because it was just so ridiculous how right. they used Hassan Reddick. And, and that defense... The offense was a problem. Don't get me wrong down the stretch. But defensively, uh, they just looked absolutely lost. So Fangio, <laughs> he is well-respected. We know what he could do in this league. Uh, once again, though, I, I just can't see how I'm sitting here at the end of the year saying it got worse, uh, worse on defense uh, with now bringing – a, a coach that will be better for Philadelphia than what we saw uh, with the ups and downs of the defense a year ago. Remember they trade us on right to the Jets and then they signed the Jets best pass rusher, Bryce Huff, the younger version of, of kind of a Reddick to, to replace him there in Philadelphia. All right, let's go up to DC four and 13 for the, for the commanders, the Daniel Snyder era, finally over there, new ownership, a guy that you know, that owned that, that you won't know well, that owner up there, um, New quarterback, new coach, new ownership, new branding, new everything. How, how do you think that stench of that of, of, of the commanders that's been over the, of the, that organization the last eight to ten years helps that franchise? Uh, it's, it's enormous. <laughs> it, it is unbelievable. Now, I don't know what it's going to turn out to be in terms of, of football success or not. You still got to hit on the players. But getting rid of uh, that POS, I'll be polite here, and Daniel Snyder, uh, it is a huge, huge, huge win for Commanders fans in a day that, quite frankly, most of them probably thought uh, would never happen. Uh, Josh Harris not only owns the Sixers, he owns the Devils. So he lets his football people or his sports people actually be sports people. So we'll see if Peters was the right hire. I thought Johnson was going to be their head coach from the Lions. I don't think Dan Quinn uh, was a bad hire, uh, even though it ended poorly in Atlanta. But it's all around the quarterback. And what we learned last year was C.J. Stroud. And the Texans were an abysmal, and I mean in an abysmal spot. Yep. You get the right coach, you get the right quarterback, and instantly things could change overnight. Uh, I like Brian Robinson at the running back position. Terry McLaurin may be the most underrated wide receiver yep. in football. Uh, they have enough on offense. They named Jaden Daniels, obviously, the start of the other day. 
uh, to put this quarterback in a position to succeed. I don't know how many wins it, it is going to turn into this year. It doesn't matter. You just need to walk away at the end of the year still with that thought and that belief that Daniels can be the guy or is the guy, and that's how you change uh, the commander's organization. And, and we know they've got some. They, they're pre- they've been pretty good on defense the last several years. They've got a lot of first round picks on that defensive line in the secondary. This a lot of people think this could be the sleeper team every year. There's one or two teams that kind of come out of nowhere. If Daniels can handle the the pro style offense, the pro life, Cliff Kingsbury. What do you think of Cliff Kingsbury being his OC? Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I think, is a good offensive coordinator. As a head coach, he was incredible to start the year, and then was just a disaster. Yep. down the stretch. So I have no issue with uh, Kingsbury being um, the OC. I'm not picking them to make the playoffs, but I understand the point because even though the NFC is improved, I, I'm not saying it is caught up to the AFC, right. but it it is, it's in a better spot this year, heading into this year than it, where it was heading into last year. Uh, but yeah, if you go nine and eight, which is not impossible, like I'm not asking them to go in 11 or 12 games, they go nine and eight that could be a team that could just sneak into the playoffs and be one of those teams that we don't expect. But I'm not going to sit here and say that, yeah, I'm fully uh, believing that they're going to uh, the postseason this year. But if you tell me they go nine and eight, would that shock me? I know my jaw would not hit the floor. Yeah. And and Quinn's a Quinn knows what he's doing as a coach. I mean, obviously like you said, didn't end well, but he did make a super bowl in Atlanta. They play, plays that uh, that kind of that LO Seattle defense that he's been known for. Did a great job there in Dallas. All right, let's let's end it up in Dallas. Twelve and five for the Cowboys. They get run out of the building by Green Bay in the playoffs. What do you think is going to happen here with Dak? And uh, I think C.D. Lamb will get taken care of at some point here. What do you th- do? You think it's the right move to let Dak play it out, or would you extend Dak? Um, I think this is more Dak Prescott than it is Jerry Jones. And what I mean by this is there's a no tag clause in his contract. Right. So if I was advising Dak, I don't think there's any harm in waiting. And at the end of the year, getting this figured out because the price is only going up and up and up. And I think Dak is just a very good quarterback, not a great quarterback, Right. but very good quarterbacks reset the market and they get top of the the market value. Uh, So he'll get more money. We saw the last time his contract was up, he had that disaster injury and that terrible injury, and he still got paid. So I'm not concerned, oh, if you get paid, then you're going to go lose all your money. Uh, there will be enough teams that would want Dak Prescott. But this is what Jerry Jones does, even with what I just said. Jerry Jones now cares more about how much drama he could stir up <laughs> and how much conversation he could stir up rather than winning football games. And look, Micah Parsons doesn't have a new deal. C.D. Lamb doesn't have a new deal. The coach is on the final year right. of his contract and the quarterback. I think this is going to be... The Cowboys are one of the teams this year that made the playoffs a year before winning the division that will miss it this year. I don't think they're going to be a disaster, but I could see them being eight and nine, nine and eight, because there's a lot of uncertainty with this team and that impacts them on the field. But I'm not saying that Dak will definitely be gone next year, but look at Seattle. Like Geno Smith has another year left on his contract. If Dak could go wind up in Seattle where you have Jackson Smith and Jigba, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, I would much rather be there right. than in Dallas. And there will be other destinations that come out as well. Ultimately, I, I think he will get another deal done with the Cowboys because this is the Jerry playbook, you know, drama, 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 and then eventually get the deal done. But if I was Dak, I would think long and hard about returning to Dallas after this year. Another option, New Orleans. He's a Louisiana guy, so potentially New Orleans, you know, with what they do, then they do with Derek Carr. All right, so um, again, Dallas, in, well, I saw a stat – Dallas has spent like the bottom two or three teams in actual cash allocation on their roster the last three or four years than any team in the league. And we always think the Cowboys are the richest team in the league, which they are off the field. But on the field, they spend like the second or third least amount of real cash per year the last five or six years. Skip Bayless put it perfectly. And I don't think I could usually say that when talking about (laughs) Skip Bayless. But the use of a comma in his tweet was massive. Jerry Jones said all in this year. Skip Bayless was not wrong when he tweeted out all in. And I'm just repeating the tweet. Pause, 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 pause. My ass. Because like straight up, that was the Cowboys this year. They said they were all in. And what was their biggest move? Bringing back Ezekiel Elliott? Like give me a break. All right. Sounds like you like Philly in this division. Um, I think we both do. Who do, do 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 Who do you think comes in second? It doesn't even matter. They, I'll say the Cowboys, but I think I, I think this team only puts or this division puts only one team in the in the postseason, and that's the Eagles. 
I agree. I think we're 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 on we're on a consensus here. Philly wins this division. Interesting to see Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. That'll be a very interesting storyline throughout. All right, listen to the Powers on Sports podcast along with Zach Gelb. It's part of uh, the Zach Gelb Show, three to six Monday through Friday. Infinity Sports Network. You can find Zach on X and Twitter at Zach Z A C H Gelb G E L B. YouTube page, all his stuffs on all over the place. So keep up the great work there, Zach. Let's go to the AFC East. We're going to start in Buffalo, start in Western New York this time, 11-6. and six. They lose Stephon Diggs, kind of a new offensive philosophy the second half of the year, more running with Joe Brady. James Cook emerges. Dalton Kincaid emerges. They lose a bunch of guys on defense, Poyer and, and Hyde. Just give me a thought on what's going on in Buffalo, kind of a, tra- a little bit of a transition, not a rebuild, but still a little bit of a transition. Yeah, so I think Buffalo is just comfortable with being good because remember how long it was like 17 years or so that they were without making the postseason before Sean McDermott got there. So I think the Pagula family fear is what happens if we get rid of Sean McDermott. And sometimes uh, the person that tears down your house and builds it back up doesn't put the roof on your house to to finish it off. Um, But I think McDermott's a good coach, but he has some flaws. Um, you know, he would get a job tomorrow if he did get fired. Uh, and, and I'm a Sean McDermott fan, you know, out, you know, years ago, I wanted actually the Eagles to hire him and they hired Doug Peterson, which was a, a, a good thing. Obviously, obviously the, the nine 11 comments in this whole speech, that was just disgusting. And that's right. when I did not defend right. Sean McDermott. And I blasted him, but I still think the bills are going to be good until someone in the AFC East knocks off the Buffalo bills. And they've had some injuries, you know, Milano the other day. And, and right. now we don't know when he's going to come back. Um, but you still have the best quarterback in the division and that's Josh Allen and James Cook was really good last year. And I think Dalton Kincaid's going to be a player this year. And the big question is what will Keon Coleman be? Right. Um, and, and I liked him at, at Florida state a lot. So this team, I still will pick them to win the division. And some people are like, Oh, they got no chance to, to go to the super bowl. I feel like a place like Buffalo where they've never won a super bowl, <laughs> the years that you expect it, which has been the last few years, they have failed. It would not shock me if the Bills are playing on on Super Bowl Sunday this year. What I what I will predict though is Josh Allen wins the MVP. I think this is set up this year for Josh Allen to win the MVP because people are starting to fall off on the Bills. You know, maybe expecting the Dolphins to win the division, maybe expecting the Jets to win the division. As long as he wins the division, he will win the MVP because they're not going to try to give it to Mahomes again. They're not going to try to give it to Lamar Jackson again. And I think it's set up. For Josh Allen this year, even if the Bills aren't great, to exceed expectations. So I like Allen to win the MVP this year. That's a good. I like that prediction. I think it's a good thing for Allen too. Now with no digs, with the pressure of having to force the ball into the guy who begs for the ball and is kind of a complainer. Now you got more of a wide ranging assembly of guys. I think Kincaid's going to be a breakout star at tight end. Yeah, they got Knox is pretty good. Shakir's a pretty good two and three. If Keon Coleman plays and they can get some play action with that running game, I think it's going to be good for Josh Allen to distribute the ball in and around that offense. Yeah, and I talked to Sal Capaccio the other day, the sideline reporter uh, for the Buffalo Bills, and he made it clear. Like the players, in, and I know Deion Dawkins while I went to college with him, uh, and Tyler Medikevich, the players in that locker room, they loved Stephon Diggs. But with that being said, and Stephon Diggs was a very good player for the Bills. But last year, even though he had over 1,000 yards, they get 1,100 yards, Uh, His last touchdown of the season, I was there. It was in Philadelphia about Thanksgiving weekend. His last 100-yard game uh, was somewhere in October. So there was always drama around Stephon Diggs. And Sal Capaccio said it the other day, not that he was a bad teammate, but there is like a little bit of a sense of relief that he's no longer there. They still got to replace him, obviously. But now the offense isn't so worried about that dark cloud that was hanging yeah. over the organization. That really all started last year uh, when you had the whole situation where he didn't or he reported them was sent home. And then you didn't get good right. clarity out of uh, Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott or Josh Allen or Stefan Diggs throughout the whole matter of what actually happened. All right, let's head down to Miami, 11-6 and six for the Dolphins. They lose in the playoffs, obviously, in the, in the very cold game in Kansas City. We heard the Tua comments here in the last 24 hours with, with Brian Flores. Yeah. Right, being there about how Flores was just a disaster with Tua. Can this team be a playoff team if they don't have, a, if they don't have home field advantage? Do they have to have home field advantage with the style of play they play? Or can, they, can this be a team that can go on the road and win a game? <laughs> I still feel I, I'm picking them to miss the playoffs this year. Okay. Now, someone's got to miss the playoffs in the AFC East outside of the Patriots. 
I think this division's only sending two. I'm going with the Jets and I'm going with the Bills. But their roster's really damn good. My three questions are the offensive line, right? the defense with the players they lost at the end of last season. I know Wilkins is no longer there, but now coming back from injury with Chubb and Jalen Phillips, Phillips who, yeah. who's ahead of schedule Phillips. Um, but still, I then look at the quarterback and I say, is Tua, I think Tua is just good. I don't think Tua is great. And I used to be a huge Tua fan when he was at Alabama. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, even if it's a home game, I don't know if they're winning a playoff game. Cause last year, the, I picked them to win the division. The bills were vulnerable and Buffalo practically begged the dolphins to beat Buffalo in Miami's uh, house in the last week of the season. Yeah. And Buffalo didn't even play their a game and Buffalo was still able to win. So yeah. I still have a question mark on Miami. They have talent. They're going to score a lot of points. They are a good team, but I can't really expect a lot out of them in terms of winning a playoff game or winning two playoff games. But with how much you pay Tua, you better go win one playoff game this year because if you don't, then people are going to look at that contract and say, hmm, this is the quarterback in the year of 2024. You could pay a lot of money for a quarterback, but it doesn't guarantee a squad. Uh, let's head up to Foxborough. Full rebuild up in, in effect there. Belichick out. New England 4-13 and last year. Clean house. They do promote Jer Jared Mayo, who was part of the Belichick tree to some degree. You know, obviously this is all about a year to figure out if Drake May can play. And they draft Drake May. Who knows how much he'll play. I don't think he'll start the year. You'll probably see him week four, week five, week six, something like that. Brissett's going to be the quarterback, but a full rebuild in New England. Yeah, as a Patriot fan, let me make this clear. I don't want to see Drake May. I I said when he was drafted until November, I don't think I'll be able to keep those emotions calm until November. So <laughs> bare minimum, I don't want to see him in September. This right. offensive line is trash. Yes, uh, The playmakers, Polk I like out of Washington, Baker I like out of UCF, but Baker in the other preseason game had a few balls that were thrown his way that Drake May put him right in his hands and he couldn't catch him, especially that one long deep ball. So this is quarterbacking 101. I'm not I'm not usually a guy that's like, hey, don't play the quarterback just to not play the quarterback. But I don't think you need to play the quarterback when the surrounding uh, 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 with Drake May to start the year is so, so bare. Like yeah. Ramondre Stevens is a good running back. I, I don't know who to rely on at the wide receiver position and the offensive line. You know, I gave you my thoughts on that. So eventually they will play Drake May. I I'm just still trying to figure out what Gerard Mayo is going to be as a coach, I know he'll be a player's coach, yeah. but it holds his play players accountable. And they used to call him Belichick Jr. I think he obviously has a lot more personality yeah. than Bill Belichick, but they guaranteed him basically the job. And Mike Vrabel was out there, who's also right. a former Patriot. I, yeah. I would rather, and I like Gerard Mayo a lot, but I would rather have Vrabel than Gerard Mayo. Defense, I know they got rid of Judon. They paid a lot of guys defensively this off, uh, you know, defensively this off season. Uh, bringing them back, and they have a solid defense. I like Christian Gonzalez a lot, as long as he can stay healthy, yeah. uh, as he gets in his second year of the league, and he was looking really damn good before he got hurt a year ago. But this, to me, is a three-year rebuild plan. Year one, wash. Year two, improve. Year three, go make the playoffs. But they need a number one wide receiver. They've tried uh, with Calvin Ridley. They tried with Brandon Ayuk. Uh, <laughs> but this offseason coming up, they got to go get a number one. Because if they don't get a number one, even if Drake May – could be sensational as a quarterback, and I hope that's the case, then I don't, I just don't see it working out long term. But that's what I like so far. Bill would have never even offered Calvin Ridley what they offered him or Brandon Ayuk what they offered right. him. At least Elliot Wolf is willing to do that. Now they need Drake May to show something down the stretch so people actually want to come join the Patriots. That's a great point. Is you got to, you, that people don't want, people want to, you, you have to want to have people take the money because they're mm -hmm. willing to offer it. You got to have people want to take it. All right, let's wrap up in your neck of the woods. The Jets, seven and 10. Obviously, last year was a complete uh, meltdown when, when Rodgers goes down. They somehow won seven games with Zach Wilson and Mike White and all the other guys that played their quarterback. Obviously, year two, A Rod, Sala, the, the, the little bit of friction over the offseason with all that stuff. With can 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 there just be some stability and some? Is the noise going to be what we think it's going to be, or how do you think the noise level is going to be uh, in New York? But uh, Robert Sala, I, I'm not putting any of this year on him. This is all on ayahuasca, Aaron. Uh, this is just <laughs> like when Kevin Durant joined the Brooklyn Nets. I don't care how they want to. Uh, pretend to paint the picture. We all know who's making the decisions. We all know who runs the organization. The Jets improved their offensive line, but once again, you're improving it from the bottom. Is it good I, enough? I, that's the I I don't think so personally. If Smith could stay healthy, sure, but he's never healthy. At least you have the insurance of Fashanu, but 
Right. Um, the Jets, not that long ago, were pumping up uh, Mackay Becton after they drafted him right. out of Louisville. Well, this is what I know about the Jets. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, and Aaron Rodgers is a heck of a trio. Now you got to protect him, and I know this defense is going to be really good. Um, the Jets, they got to make the playoffs this year. The time is ticking away with Aaron Rodgers, so they're Super Bowl bust expectations, but I think the farthest they could go uh, is the AFC Championship game. And remember, when Rodgers was in Green Bay, I know he won one Super Bowl, but towards the end, he had a lot of good teams, and it was an easier road to travel in the NFC than the AFC to get to the Super Bowl. And sometimes it was his fault. Other times it was other people in that organization's fault. But that game against Tampa Bay, where Tom Brady, and you know me, I love Tom Brady, my favorite football player ever. But he was a turnover machine in that second half. And Rodgers, at one point, had three drives where I think they were down by five. And it was three and out, three and out. And then there was another time that they punted. You know what? There is a problem with Rodgers, as great as he is in the big games, there are concerns about him. And now you're in a tougher conference. He should win comeback player of the year. The Jets should be a playoff team. Um, but I know a lot of Jets fans are like, okay, it's now or never. Uh, I'm not very confident the Jets are, are playing on Super Bowl Sunday. Give, give the fan, give the give the audience a quick sense of the desperation that the Jets fan base has because of the in uh you know they've been so bad for so long, 14 years without a playoff or just how hungry that is that fan base. Um if you basically starved yourself for 30 is this the days. Hunger game? Is this the Hunger Games? Look, like, Jason, if I starved you for 30 days and then put a steak in front of you, <laughs> you would devour that steak in about a half a second. That's the Jet fan. Um, if you put a Super Bowl trophy in front of them, they would devour it in a second. And one of my best friends is a Jet fan. And I said to him, I go, you know how delusional you are? I go, it doesn't take much, but they always take the bait. But they are a very loyal fan base. Um, but I say to my my friend that he he's like convinced they're going 11, 12 wins this year and they're winning the Super Bowl. And I'm just like, prepare yourself to be let down if those are your expectations. Last question. Will will the Jets in week five, week six, week seven, will they make a move for Devontae Adams if the Ra Raiders are struggling? I, honestly, if I'm Devontae Adams, I'm playing the long-term game here. And John Kuhn told me this is not going to happen. But I would try to force my way back to Green Bay and wow. pair up with the future of Jordan Love wow. rather than going back to play with the Jets and Aaron Rodgers because you don't know how much longer Aaron Rodgers is going to be there. And right. let's be real, uh, that's a big reason why he's no longer in Green Bay to begin with because there were questions about Rodgers' future and they were devoting all the attention to Rodgers. And Adams was basically like, bleep this, I'm going to play with my friend in Derek Carr. And then Derek Carr <laughs> was off the team uh, in less than a year. So I would go play the long-term game here. They'll make a move. The Jets should be all in. And, and I do think the Jets are uh, all in. Um, but I think that's I, I think Devontae Adams will at least have the respect to Antonio Pierce for one more season. But then in the offseason, that's where I think Devontae Adams gets dealt. Sounds like you like two teams to make it. Who wins the division? I'll go Buffalo. I like Buffalo still winning the division. I'll put the Jets in second and then the Dolphins in third missing the playoffs. But you could order those teams one, two, three, any way you want. And usually I don't uh, I'm not afraid to call people idiots and morons and dopes. I couldn't call you an idiot, a moron or a dope. Uh, if you told me, hey, the Dolphins win the division or the Jets win the division yeah. and then the Bills finish third. All right, Zach Gelb, appreciate the time and great work. Keep up the great work. Zach Gelb, show three to six, Monday through Friday, Infinity Sports Network, at Zach Gelb on, on X. Check out his YouTube channel for his uh, interviews and such. He does a great job. Gets people from all over the country. He's going to be out in Vegas doing some stuff here in, in short order. So enjoy the football season. We'll be in touch, okay? Jason, all the best. Always appreciate this. Thank you.